What's up, guys? This is Holiday, the Golden Child. Thank you for tuning in to Eight at the Table, Season 4. We are not playing with you this season. I need you guys to stay tuned. I need you guys to subscribe. I need you guys to stream. And most importantly, I need you to click that notification button so you guys can know when we are on air. Thursday, don't miss it. I'm here with Dave, I'm here with Nasha, I'm here with Esso, I'm here with Amanda, and so much more of my wonderful cast. They are not here right now, but you just stay tuned and we can see everybody. Keep supporting us, keep subscribing, and stay tuned. What's the difference between being wifey and fuckable? Wifeable and fuckable. Personally, for me, I feel like being wifey material is something you see automatically. It's not something you have to look for. It's like everything she does makes her a contender for you. Fuckable is more like she's fun, she's attractive, sex is good, but she doesn't possess the long-term traits that you need from your wifey, which is some things like understanding, understand being able to deal with disappointment, being able to be uh, just available. You gotta find out they have those traits. You don't see it right away. You gotta invest some time in them, get to know them a little bit, see if they possess these qualities that make them wifeable. Versus someone that's fuckable, it's like an instant attraction. Like, oh, I'm attracted to you, you're fuckable. But so, are you really wifeable? So you're a man, what makes a girl fuckable? The fuckable girl I have bad intentions with. She's one dimensional. I just want the ass. I'm doing it for all the goddamn wrong reasons. I don't give a fuck what you bring into the table. I just want ass. I want to fuck you. I want to play with you. I want to touch you. I want to feel you. And I'm not looking for substance at that point when it comes to the fuckable. How does she aesthetically look? The well, she has girl. to look appealing. That's what's going to make her fuckable for me. Mm. I mean, I got a question. What's the difference between the look of a wifeable person and a fuckable person? Because they both need to look good. And they both want to get fucked. What's the and difference? They, okay, wait, wait, <laughs> hold on, guys. I don't think attraction really, like, physical appearance plays a huge part in that because no. there, there's always somebody for somebody out there. Like, what may be attracting to you may not be attracting to Dave. So you can't sit here and say, oh, that makes you unwifeable because you're not pretty or I you're not good looking, I you never know? said unwifeable. I said where it begins at. For a man, y'all are speaking from being a woman in which I think that we want to think or what you think that we should say. But the first thing for a man, for a man like myself is, attractive is the first thing that you see. Then you determine, then you look at her further. You might look at how she's moving around the venue, if she's whispering in every dude's ear. They've noticed, then we start to determine what type of chick that she is from there. And then you go in and you still might talk to her, but you're determining when you see her move around, if she's a bimbo, as you would say, <laughs> or if she's a woman of stature that you might want to wife, and then you start talking to her, and then you get to determine where her head is at. Oh, there is mind. some dudes that, that will smash just because she got a fat ass. Just Definitely. because she got big titties. But they don't care about but how she fuckable. looks. That, those are the fuckable. That's they don't awesome. care how she that's looks. That's a difference of attraction. So it's like, what are you looking for in a woman to say that she's fuckable? Big ass, right? Like she got a big ass. You see some girl walking down the street with, yeah, big ass, big titties. You're looking at her huge assets and you're like, I want to fuck this girl. But if you see like someone that's more of, you know, your direct attraction, she has a pretty face, she's tall, she has, um, she's a brunette, she has brown hair, and you love that. You're kind of thinking, okay, that's wifey. I want to go on a date now. Yeah, like so I want to talk to her. Wifey. I want to get to know her. I want to know at that point. Yeah, you, don't think that's, you wouldn't yeah. know, but that's right. the kind of attraction that you're going to say, okay, well, you know, she looks like a nice girl that I'm interested in talking to and dating. You know, Further. something like that. Yeah. I think the first initiation of meet and greet, hang out wifeable and fuckable to get treated the same. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. You know, so at the end of the day, <laughs> like, it's like, I mean, if I just want to fuck you, but I want to wife her, I'm taking you out to the same restaurant on the first date. I'm going to have the same conversation with both of y'all because I'm yeah. the person I want to fuck. I want to get to know them, too, because I want to know if I give her this D or he, it, is he, she going to get crazy. And with wifey, you asking her the same questions. You want to know who you who you trying to dig on? Who you trying to pursue? You want to know this person? Yeah, they're going through the same they trial the same and error. Protocol. Now, what happens 
what happens is, yes. is that what deciphers between who's fuckable and wifey is, is the, con I really think it's the conversation. Let's keep it real. I'm not even coming to the strip club to meet any woman. Nobody to, ever does. To, I'm not. I've been there for many years. I don't care about that. Dave knows what type of <laughs> niggas I, I am. I don't fuck with strippers. I didn't want to put Neither it out I. there. Uh, I don't fuck with them. Okay. So when they floating but around. that's why you have a bias. So when I have a feeling when about their the situation. If y'all let me finish. While the strippers were floating around thinking they were getting saved in wife. That's right. I stopped going to the strip club when the strip club changed. Mm -hmm. When the strip club was the popping space and everybody was coming from all over the world. You were talking about and, New York. And <laughs> niggas, they, yes, they was coming. When, when, when Jermaine Dupree would come and bring all the bitches from Magic City to Sue's Rendezvous and have us all in the front row. He's shaking his head. All the ballers come to the front row. We were throwing out five, ten thousand 10,000 every fucking Thursday, like okay. religiously, okay? Balling up shit, Tyson Beckfield, everybody that was famous, nobody was walking out there with the strippers. We took them to the room upstairs. In New York. We, we took them to the room upstairs and we handled our business you talking about New and York? we left them and we left them in the room upstairs. Then when we went places the next day, we met women that we really wanted to fuck with, that we thought, okay? Well, it wasn't now, like that. I lived in Miami now, eight years. As, it, as things, sport bitches all as, day. Have, as things have progressed, you can go to drug dealer lands like Miami, um, Detroit, and yeah, they're gonna be in those places, but we're not talking about those in those places that are going to wife those women. We're talking about men who are going along in a different route saying, I'm gonna play with those, and these is the ones that I'm gonna wife. So I have a the question. ones that I'm going to wife. As soon as the ones that don't, those are the fuckable ones. Right. The wife ones are the ones that you're trying to get to know. You don't know where they're coming from. That's how it used to be. And you look for qualities in them to actually make you a better man. Her pussy is not making me a better man. Her mind is making me a better man, where she can take me to. If she understands the value of me more than what I'm doing with tricking this money. It sounds like it doesn't matter what she does for a living. It doesn't matter where you meet her at. What I'm saying is, is the conversation determines whether she's wifeable or fuckable. And now, if you want to miss out on a blessing or miss out on what could have been the best thing that ever happened to your life because you're judging what I do for a living or she does for a living, then that's your, that's your opinion. I'm not here to challenge challenge you what you feel and think about that particular uh, career choice. Well, my only point is to say that at the end of the day, no matter where you met me at, like Alan said, I came in the strip, you came in the strip club just to get a dance, just to fuck, just to take a bitch back to the room. But that shit could change like that from two drinks at the bar. And now you realize, oh, you a Sag too? You a Scorpio too? Damn, my mother died on the same day or whatever the common interest is. There's this thing called, um, called the mirror effect. Which, which says that the more time you spend around somebody, you become attracted to them. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just a, a law. It's a fact. It's not something that I'm, I'm making up for you. So at the end of the day, even if you wasn't attracted, or I'm like, I feel like this about strippers. You know how many men I've met because of the way they've met me, or hearing certain topics we talk about on there, have their own opinion, and then meet me in person and be like, Yo, you. I didn't even know you were like this. Conversation changed, tone changes because your perception. That's cool. Yeah, but you're talking about. Initial attraction is how you like somebody when you first see them. What about inner beauty? What about the girl who is the bad bitch, who she's dope? Like you said, she could be a bimbo, she could be all of That's that. That's the one you gotta spend time with, though. Right, you but, you, but you're only gonna know if you spend time with this person and, and get to know them. And basically what Holiday is saying is, you can be fuckable, but what if you have the qualities to be wifeable as well? That That is, that does exist. I feel like I, I possess both traits. So that does exist in this world. You may not be looking at them like that per se, but so you're gonna tell me that you never met somebody that's fuckable and may be wifeable too? Never in your life? I'm not saying, all the things that y'all are saying, I'm not saying. We're talking about preference. I have no problem with strippers. <laughs> I have no problem with who's being fuckable. But we're talking about what a man thinks is wifeable. And that's all I keep saying, that we have women that keep 
telling other women what men think is wifeable. And that's not what we're here. We're here to hear what men say. But when I say what I got to say, people can get offended and take it off to a whole nother plane. We're talking about me. Dave might have wiped the stripper. He might be cool with it. He might have sat down and talked to them. For me personally, I'm not talking to them. You see them like a species. I'm not talking to a stripper. <laughs> They're there to do a job. Entertain. And that's what I'm there for. For. When I go to the basketball game, I'm not trying to get to know the ball players. I'm not trying to have a whole in depth. Where even if I go to WNBA game, I don't care. I'm there to see the show. When I see the show, I leave. That's me. I'm not. I'm not mad at no other man who thinks that they need to talk to somebody while they came to get a dance to get their rocks off and they find a way to get close to them. That's them. I'm not that style of person. I go to places for certain things and I go to look to get that from there and I don't want nothing else from there. Period. I think that you so what I want to say, and this is from my opinion, that the number one rule in being a wifey is being able to take care of yourself, how you carry yourself mm -hmm. and if you can carry yourself through life. So I feel like a man is looking to see how you approach him how if you are a damsel in distress no man wants to wife someone that's just looking for a man to pick them up and rescue them like you said like you said that china got rescued from the strip club i don't think that a man is going to look at that and say okay well that's wifey i got her out the strip club and now i'm about to take care of her once you know how to take care of yourself and once a man sees that you know you got for yourself and i don't have to come and take care of you that's wifey. So in that aspect, I don't think that you can be both. A man is going to tell if you're the type of uh, type of woman that is going to try to live off of the money that you have and have you take care of her, whether you guys are going to try to figure out something together as a unit. I think you need a little bit of balance. Yeah, well, because, I don't disagree. I you know, me it. as a woman, uh, you know, I had my daughter when I was 16. So I feel like that automatically put me in this trait where I want to be wifey at a young age. You know, just recently in in the office uh, this past week, uh, there was a 21 year old that, you know, we work with who was like, I'm not trying to be wifeable right now. And I was like, damn, when I was 21, I was like, I want to be wifey because I, I had a daughter. So I was already automatically thinking that way. Like, I want to be wifey. I want to be wifey. And when it being that since I've been in so many relationships and have experience, I feel like you do need that balance. You need to have a little bit of damsel in distress in you just because men like to have their ego, like they're saving you or they're doing something mm -hmm. for you or they're <laughs> helping you in some shape or form, but you can still be independent and be a boss like me, you know? Oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. So, that's so psychic. Like Doing it again, talk about what men want. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I don't think that there's bye nothing bye. wrong with a man treating you and a man taking care of you, but once you let him know that you don't need him, you got shit on your hands. Oh, then he's out. Then he's out, yeah. He's yeah. not yeah. out, like, no, that's, that's, not, that's, that's not true. That's, that's not true. true. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. So, yes. You don't let still, them corrupt I don't, you. I don't think at, at one bit in, in a chance do I come off like I need a man. I think I look very much like a chick that all fails. I can take care of myself. We're going to figure it out and I'm going to get back to it. However, I also come off as the woman who I need my man. I like him around. I like him doing the things that he does. You know what I'm saying? And I do play damsel in stress. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Oh, I need your help. Oh, can you help me with this? Like, I need help with this. Yeah, you do. Because then what is his purpose? Because his purpose isn't just dick. Just like my purpose isn't just pussy. Well, I will, Our I will... purpose is to be there for each other and complliment what one, I think, traits of each other. So it's like, I agree what with he that. lacks, with I that, pick I up. And so... Where I lack, he picks up. You understand what I'm saying? So I may be better at organizing. He may be better at paying bills on time. He, you understand what I'm saying? Those are the things that we come together and make happen. So I just think like when you're choosing a wifey, you're definitely choosing somebody that complements your characteristics, the good and the bad, and she can handle it. Like she's not trying to change you. You well, that only saying? works. What she's saying, if if the if she is doing what she needs to do for herself and she's got it together, I'm gonna love that. I'm gonna appreciate that, and I could build with that. And I'm still gonna take care of her. I'm not gonna. I, I don't look forward to asking her for shit. Yeah. I don't need nothing because I'm doing what needs to be done. Yeah. And if she's doing that, I'm gonna respect her even greatly. And now we're building. Now we're taking things to the next level. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to do anything except what you love doing. Be you. Do not change who you are. If you like to clean, clean because you're clean 
clean person. I'm not asking you to clean because I get maids to do my goddamn cleaning. Go you know, team. no, it's just what it's just what it is because, and I'm gonna help you. What is it you like to do? I know so many people that I could connect to. They say, oh, you like to do that? Let me connect you to A and B in order so you can propel yourself That's to be something greater. Right this here. is what I do. You know, say so. I don't need if a woman is. And listen, I'm all right with, I don't do 50-50. I don't need a half a chick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just don't. You know, I don't want to meet you halfway. I need you full way. I need you to be 100 and I'm 100. Because then when you are slacking a little, let's say you go down to 80, I don't have a pro problem putting the extra 20%. It's fine. I could do that. But 50-50, that means we're already, we're already lost. Because now we got to get to 100 and you're 50. I'm not doing that. So I, I like your train of thought. Don't let them corrupt you, girl. All right? I'm just leaving <laughs> It'd be like that. For, for some wild reason, I hear a lot of like, you know, um, I go on dates and then in the conversation, it's like, you know, I'm taking this time to get to know myself. And, and I'm like, like, how long does it take for you to get to know yourself? I need to improve. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm thinking, I'm like, well, whether we're in a relationship or not, you're meant to always be improving and do what needs to be done. It never stops. The improving never, just because we're together ends. and this is where relationships go left field because yep. people feel like they get stagnated and they don't want to improve anymore because they're like oh now nah, i got what i what i wanted yep. well no i need you to continue improving i'm going to stay improving so there's no lacking because then we're not going to the 50 50 like i said so my single comes from people they they're going through a lot nowadays people just doing too much and i'm i know what i'm doing i know what i need in my life so it's like are you coming to the table with being honest of who you are. I don't want the fake person that in time you're here attempting to change me. But people fall in love initially for who they are. Oh, I like you, you're fun, you go out, you dance, you might drink a little, we go home, you're spicy, and all of a sudden down the line, he's like, listen, you drink too much. Yeah. And I don't like that yeah. outfit you're wearing. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. you, you're late. You, you're, late. you're meant to be here at this time. I don't do none of that shit. I exercise free will. You do what you want. There's a line. Once you, you could dance before the line, you can tap dance on the fucking line. But once you cross that line, I gotta revalue shit to say this not might be the chick i need to fuck with because you're crossing the line and i don't like that shit it's just what it is <laughs> what there's boundaries i think that proves wifey and fuckable respecting boundaries like if we just fucking i do what i want you understand what i'm saying if i'm wifey i'm respecting your boundaries he may not like texting he may not be a phone conversation person he may be a person like i like going on dates at nighttime i like I, i'm more of a brunch and lunch person when you're trying to be wifey or you're finding hubby they accommodate those things for you like you know what i'm saying like there's a certain list to finding a hubby i like, think that term too when you think about that term that is like a long life term like it's to wifey, wifey hubby like you're that's in it for the long run so when you're thinking about that, I feel like sometimes we as people, we're not looking at it in the long run. We're looking at it in the short term and then like, yeah, we'll get there eventually. But it's even more deeper as to the person getting along with your family. Like that, I've had so many issues with that before. And that's one of the reasons why sometimes things don't last because... Whoever you're with, you want them to be able to get along with your loved ones and vice versa. Like, so, but it's not like, it. Yeah, for it's me, issues. I don't got time for that shit. It's so if a motherfucker don't like me, I'm not dating them. But yeah. okay? it's not, I'm it's not a simple You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not dating them. It's not them. as care. simple as they don't get along. So fuck it. They don't get along. Yeah, it's, no. It's, it's for being me, respecting it's... of their family, their friends. Like, if you know that... I have daughters, so that too. Exactly, like, being respected of their children. Ball game. Yeah, of their children. But if I know that your grandmother and your auntie do not care for me, I'm not... What I'm going to do is be respectful, right? Respectful meaning I just won't come to the party where I have to be in their presence to be disrespected. Nobody wants to be in But nobody there. likes that position. Like, your partner's position, they're going right, to hate but, that because I've been there. That's but, a horrible but position. this is the reality of it, right? This is the reality of it. As my partner, as my hubby, as your wifey, right? If, if if every time I bring my man to a barbecue or whatever, my Uncle Joe is acting crazy, got something to just say, I'm dating a white man. And every time I bring him to my, my function, my Uncle Joe has just always got some racist remarks, disrespectful to him, and all that shit. Oh, I'm going to be snapping on Joe. to like him. He will be respectful in his presence. What if but, it's vice but, versa? If, but if Uncle Joe continuously gets out of line and my man got to show him this is not the... I'm gonna stand back out of that. What if it's vice versa? No, what if I it's your man? Your job what if it's your man having an issue with your Joe. uncle? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. It's my man. I'm bringing my man. No, to what if your uncle's not doing nothing and it's your your partner that's like, oh, I don't really like your family and always talking about your family okay. and having issues okay, with your family? So listen, How do you handle well, that? In that? In that occasion, at the end of the day, right? I'm dating my man for the reasons I'm dating my man, right? 
And this technicality of you don't like my uncle, I don't live with my uncle every day. I don't see him every day. He's not going to give me a baby. He's not going to help me build a foundation. He's not going to comfort and console me every night. So at the end of the day, it's a harsh reality. I'm not saying I'm going to be distant, but just when I see Uncle Joe now, my man won't be there. Well, I'll tell you one thing, my ex-girlfriend was like that. She was, my ex-girlfriend, but real quick, my ex-girlfriend was like that. She was, one one of the things that I truly appreciate about her is that she didn't let nobody disrespect me. If even her close friend said some slick shit, she was like, oh, we're not doing that. We're not talking to my man like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what he did. And then when we're alone, she'll tell me, motherfucker, right. you was bugging. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. and, and I'm not letting my friends play you because I got to wake up to you every day and deal exactly. with you. We're not doing that. And, you, better, so. you better, one thing about women, you better realize what you got to go home to in your household. Protect your household first because everybody else is disposable when you get into a serious relationship. I and was just and, that, and I'm just, I'm just, keep, everybody else is disposable at that point sisters brothers everybody because this is the person this is your new family that's the reality that when you marry somebody when you get into a relationship and i mean i'm talking about serious and i'm not nobody wants to replace their mama but if mommy can't get it together too this is my new family and and sometimes <laughs> what happens is you allow your family to disturb your peace and if this person didn't have such an impact and opinion on your relationship, you and your man would not be even arguing. But well, what I, I was going to say is, sorry, Esso, sorry. What I was going to say was um, defend your man at all costs before family because... You could check him when y'all get home. Like, yeah, you was wrong for saying that. You should never did that. You kind of stirred up you that, that little better. drama. But, you know, the way, you know, way auntie reacted, that was a little bit much. Yeah, so that sets the tone of how they should be, you know, treating him. You know what I'm saying? But if it's your man that's not respecting your family, that just takes off the check on the, you know, hubby I'm list. That's what, that's what but I But you know how you can believe. avoid a whole lot of this is being completed with yourself before you even meet somebody else. What I hear in these conversations, as I just sat, that's why I didn't say nothing, everybody's talking about who the other person's gonna come in to complete them, right? I've been married, I always had relationships. I'm, I'm married now, I've been with my wife for 10 years. We was already who we was before we met each other. That's how it was, it, it was simple for us to say like, yo, I could fuck with you, I could fuck with you too. She had her money, she had her lounges, she had her career. No, but what about if her family don't like you? Like, uh, but, how does but that we're affect talking about you? what makes people wifeable and not wifeable. Right, and we so, said your family. And somehow it got off onto the family, but I'm it, saying once you're complete, my family knows not to fuck with me and my wife. They know better. And my wife family know not to fuck with. If they, you, you can't say nothing about me. That's it's not point. even going to get there because once I met her, I already had a standard of who I was already. All right? Your family and how you move is not going to change my standard. My standard is always going to be here and it's never going to go down whether you like it or not. So if you can't control your family and y'all can't deal with this, then we got bigger problems. You're not complete. You're not fully grown yet because they already should know their boundaries when you got a relationship when they coming in. And honor your growth. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and honor your growth. We're not going back and forth. My father, my uncles, my cousin, my cousin said one thing to my wife and this was my closest cousin and, and I told her, like, we already know we don't get down like that. And I'm not even going to talk to you about it. I'm going to talk to my wife about it. And mm -hmm. let's see what happens from there. And if I decide from that point, then maybe I might not talk to you again because our world is fucking complete already. I didn't need her to complete me. She didn't need me to complete her. We came together in love. That's why Period. I said 100-100. Nobody wants 50-50. Yeah, that's Period. why I say it don't matter about the family. It's either we going to get it right or we not. I mean, we, that makes sense. I'm just oh, saying nobody likes to be invited with that, to the though. wedding. <laughs> okay? We won't be invited because at the end of the day, me and him are going before God. Not me, him, and everybody and the 10 sisters, cousins, and all that. No, it's me and him. So at the end of the day, if y'all can't get it together for the sake of us, then y'all won't be there. Abstaining from sex, I think, is a good way to show someone that you're wifey material um, because you don't want to seem too available. I think that if you rush into sex, it might give off the wrong message. You're definitely fuckable to him. And now I know I can call you up. You gave it up real easy. You can do it again. Next time I invite you out, you know, it's going to be that kind of scenario. And I feel like the same for guys. Guys, they're seen as more husband material when they don't even talk about sex. Yep. Until, you know, 
later down the line. But it's can it be like, the maturity of the individual as well? Because these women that I've been with, that I slept with on the first night, and I had some type of longevity with them, and I did not why some judge type? them. Why some type? Say that again? You, some, said, some you said some type of maturity. Verbiage. You said some no, type. No, I'm just saying, does it come, the maturity factor, like, if, like someone said earlier, someone was just sharing that a woman goes out with the tensions, like she gets dressed up, she gets dialed up, and she's like, damn, I want dick today. You know, so I'm getting dressed, I'm dialed up, and now she goes out, you know, and if she knows what she's doing and she's 100% and got her life together, what Esso said, why can't she just with her head up high, go out, have a nice time, go home, give you some sex, and wake up and just say, thank you, I appreciate you, it was great, awesome, he's my number, call me, I'd like to see you again, and break out. Yeah, but don't I try mean, to get wiped after. I guess no, no, she might get wiped. Like, she could get wiped. She could get wiped. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, I keep talking, 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 talking for men. Hold on, I keep talking, well, you keep talking for men. That's what I'm saying. You keep talking for men. what I'm saying is, as a woman, I'm just talking to my ladies in some game. We like to keep the ball in our court. As, as, as long it's as even, we that's can. That, that game on. playing. That's what I said. That's playing games. What do you think relationship and pursuing somebody is a whole fucking game? No, it's not. I, I, I'm not for you. Games. For you. Okay, let me I don't play games. Not me. I, I, don't, I don't play. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't believe in playing oh my no God. games, period. It's the cat okay, for me. Okay, let me say this. No, no, no it's no, not no, 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 no. If I go out with her and we go out and we're not connecting on the first or second date and we don't have sex, I'm moving on. Not because I think she's a hoe or she's not a hoe. It's because whack is the cheap when you wake up. Wait, hold on. So you, wait, wait. So you, let, let's move right okay, there. So you on. move on if the girl doesn't give you sex within uh, the second, second day? day? I would, I never, that if, is if I'm going to be candid, the only woman I ever waited for more than one or two days was my wife. I already knew that we was going to be together. I never talked to no woman. I never had game. No, I swear to God, I studied real bad when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I never had game. So when I first saw her, she was the first woman. I was like, yo. Me and you supposed to be together. That's how I, I, I and said you was it direct, to her. No stuttering. I was direct. No stuttering. Boom. No, I'm and, just I, saying and, and I told her right then and there, I think that I love you the way that I felt from the first day nice. that I saw her. Nice. And she was shocked. And she said, I think I love you too. And this was on the fucking phone. And my man was like, no, the fuck she didn't say that. <laughs> I said, yes, she did. And I said, yo, come see me today. How long you been with her now? 10 years. Shout outs to you. Yeah, I told her to come see me that day, right? And then we, she took me the to go. The that didn't give him the pussy. Okay, but two no, weeks. But, but listen to what happened. Well, you sense, no but, but so yo, I'm going to tell y'all some real shit. We, I, she took me to go. Had you the, saying the, I love you before she gave you the pussy. The first day that I was with her, she, she took me to go. <laughs> he get, said I love you first. She went to go get a wax in the first day that I was with her, right? And I was like, yo, ask the chick to let me come in there with y'all. <laughs> Straight up and down. Yeah, we could go out spot and, 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 and I went in. Yo, and I and I went in there, right? And because she was so like nervous about it, I said, "Yo, I'm gonna be e easy with this one." Because most women would just be like, "I don't give a fuck. I, I, I already know what's what's coming." And that had me wait for a little while. We did other things that had led up to that type of shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go and do all of this wild shit with y'all. I'm, I'm I'm gonna keep it real. I don't want to spend money and spend time with y'all and we get down to it and our sex is trash. I'm a big sexual person. That'll ruin my whole fucking relationship. Going do, I don't give a fuck how much I like you. If we get to the end and the sex is trash, this shit is over. So that was my thing where I always would be straight up with women. Like, yo, we don't really know if we like each other until we have sex or some real shit. And they understood that because I, I would be sincere about it. And that's why we would go and we would see what's up. And then that's how shit would occur, period. And it wasn't on the whole shit. It could be a fucking professional woman. It could have been a skeezer. It could have been whatever. But like we like she said, from day one. So that made her normally, wakeable when she was like, oh, oh, oh. You were like, she's the I one. I already she's was attracted one. to her. That's it. Like, like she came to my house to give my man, to help my man get a business loan for a million dollars. So I was looking at her like, business loan, what the fuck <laughs> she doing here? Like, so she was already different in my yeah. eyes because she was coming on, on some business on shit some business and she head. wasn't coming and she was naturally sexy, but she wasn't coming on no sexy shit. So I eyeballed it and saw it. So right. basically what Esso was trying to say is being different makes you more wifeable. You know, I could be sexy, but you're gonna feel my sexy another way. I'm not gonna come on to you too strong. I'm not gonna be flirtatious with you. I'm there to do my job, do whatever I came there to do, but you're still gonna look at me, you know? In my most fuckable days, right? Because I think I got fucking. Why fuck they stop? I got, no, I got fucking me written all over me, but I'm not responding <laughs> no more. You understand what I'm saying? But in my, I got fuckable written all over me, even now, being in a relationship, because it's a walk.
It's, it's, it, and I'm going to tell you the truth. It's confidence. Men love confidence. Men love when you show of yourself. And there's something sexy about that. That makes it say, oh, she know what to do with me in the bedroom. Yeah, well, that's yeah, what I'm talking course, about. That's, the, yeah. that's what I'm expressing about the person that, you know, um, goes out that day with that confidence. Like, yeah, I got exactly. my life together. You, like you know, I, I'm, I'm rolling up. I look good. I smell good. I work. I make money. I got money in the bank. I don't give a fuck. And today, I'm looking for dick. You know, that woman, you could, you, you, you sense that. You know, and that now everybody wants to fuck you. you. When, when she's there now, wherever location you run into her, she's giving you that feeling like, I have it going on, what do you got? And it, now it's to a point for me to show her what I have and how confident I am, and we might be smashing that first day, and if she stays with that confidence, we'll have a first day, a second day, and she'll be waking up to me. I think I assess a lot of the qualities that, you know, we hold the wifey material. Um, I know how to carry myself. Like, I know how to carry my way through life. I don't need nobody to take care of me. I don't need anyone. Um, definitely want someone, but don't need. Um, I'm physically attractive, you know? Uh, I do have a great personality, like. How long you been taking now? Um, only a couple of months, but That's we've it? been, yeah, but we've been dating for over a year, though. Does that, does that count? So did you become yeah. wife and material now because of those dating? You showed something that that person, or did you see something that you was like, I want to be wifed up? Like, you know, wifed up or not, I'm always wifey material. I, I feel personally, I'm more wifeable than I am fuckable. Um, even if it's crazy, that's, I think you're fuckable too. No, I'm definitely fuckable, but I think that I'm wifeable more. Um, even if that's what I wanted, even if being fucked was all I wanted. I think that people will see me and they'll be like, okay, well, she's wife. So, you know, if I'm gonna talk to her, if I'm gonna, you know, wanna do anything with her, it's to wife her. Why would like, they think you wife though? Just because I assess all the qualities, not all the qualities, but I feel like I assess a lot of the qualities to, you know, that makes you a wife. Do you think you're different from the women that's out here right now? And that, and that's one of your qualities? Well, not everyone's the same. I don't think that I'm completely different from anyone. I might be different from Nisha in some ways. Nisha's a mother. She takes care of uh, children. And that's probably what someone would look at her and say, well, mm. she's wifey because, you know, she's a great mom. You know, obviously she can take care of herself. She can take care of her kids. I mean, I'm different. I don't have kids, um, but I'm still very responsible with money. I'm still responsible with taking care of myself. Um, I'm a very attractive woman. Um, I have a great personality. I'm very well with, I do very well with talking to people, being with, um, with other people being in a relationship with someone um i'm very unit oriented i see people for who they are i don't try to change people uh she's very very she's very very, she's very, very. very. Uh, yeah, yeah no sure. because these are all of these things that i know about me she's not just regular she's so very. what makes me wifeable might not be what makes someone else wifeable yeah. but these are a lot of qualities that i know i have within myself so when someone meets me it's not like okay well you know she's she's a good fuck like no i'm a good wife yeah like you said like i have kids i know that you know the current relationship that i'm in now it's his first experience with someone who has kids. Really? Um, so, you know, he has expressed himself to me that, you know, I'm very nurturing. And that stems from me being a mom. You better be. Got two kids. Uh, <laughs> I think that stems from me being a mom and, like, naturally wanting to provide, protect, shelter, feed. You know, like, I love feeding him. <laughs> you know, that's a big thing. You know, you know, I, I mean, you do to, know how to cook. I will say that <laughs> for sure. I used to. I used to. I used to be with this one right here, so he knows me very well. I got, I got, I got <laughs> he you. He knows me extremely well. Um, I feel like we went there. I feel like I am somebody that possesses a wife, you know, wifey material. You do have wifey, great wifey I'm qualities too. You know. Excuse so, me. <laughs> that why is you true. mad, so? I know, yo. <laughs> Right. Know, we all like this. It's new information. Yeah, the man is like this, like, huh? I didn't know either. Yeah. Now I'm on the plane. <laughs> yeah, I'm today. Yes, yes, yes. The yes. world. Thank you, Nisha. It's not that serious. That's why I don't go to movie premieres now. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. I see you. You open that door. You could have let that motherfucker close. And you open it. That's your fault now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hot in here. Nisha's definitely, you know, wife of material, and, and, and I'm glad that she's in the position. She always showed me, 
you know, that she was very nurturing. She was always spending yeah. time with her daughters, you know, because there's some girls that are out there that I always see on vacation. They got like three kids. And I'm like, where are your fucking kids? Like, you always out flying around for weeks, two weeks. Like, who's taking care of these kids? Mm -hmm. You know, so this woman definitely not doing what you're doing. So shout out to you for sure. And it goes, back, it goes back to stemming to, like, realizing that this person that you're trying to wife or make your hubby is for long term. So they have to possess these qualities that you need for a life partner. You know, like, be able to... She could be feisty, though. <laughs> I can be feisty, but you got to push me there. Like, you know? And I feel like we all naturally possess Very that. push. We all, we, all, we all possess a little crazy, just a little, a little crazy. The hook come out of her, like, yo, what the fuck? And like, as soon as you get into any type of confrontation, your wife will either, she'll fight with you about it, it's not a smack down drag out, but for some reason, when it's just somebody that you fucking, a small thing turns into a huge thing, and you realize that y'all really not supposed well, to Well, that's probably together. why before, earlier, they were talking about a, a, a wife that becomes single after 10, 15 years of marriage is because through that marriage, she's not getting fucked no more. So now when she becomes single, she want to go get busy and and you, and I look for because when I be married woman, I look for. <laughs> I, no, I'm saying when I be I've, I've been with married women that get divorced and and you know they like tell me great stories about you know you know I didn't have sex for two three years and I'm like what was I going I, I I can't do that I, I can't I can't do that you still have to be sexy I still want you to, you, you know you got to have the whole Amanda package she was just sharing that needs to run throughout the whole marriage in order so it could have sustainability so you could have that 50 year anniversary I mean, but, that's that's a perfect story, but that's not always the case with Facts. someone like two people that have been together for such a long time what about somebody that's experiencing health issues as you get older uh, like now we got things, into this you know? the health like, issues so, so. I'm just saying like that happens man. Sex, no, yeah, there can sex be issues happen but someone <laughs> being together with someone doesn't mean you can't be affectionate just because she's got a little kidney problem I mean you can still hug and kiss and make her feel <laughs> you know wanted like what the fuck does the health issue but have what to about, do with it what about the what about the woman in my experience um speaking for myself, mm -hmm. uh, were well, not always wifey material, fuckable, and had to be trained to be wifey. Yes. So you, you had to be trained with your pet? Abso absolutely. Absolutely, because your your mind frame, your dynamic, your lifestyle, it that all match. plays a major part about where you, what you want from a man. Well, what but what do you, you want from a man? But did, but Initially, in the beginning, you know, as, as just a young, you know, you fine, you all that, you want to explore your options. So you're like, I just want to fuck. And not necessarily fuck. I want to fuck and date. I want to date, then fuck, fuck, then date. Or oh, I want to do all of that. But necessarily, when you talk about wife, it's like, it's a commitment. It's like, now I got to think about this other person's feelings. I have to be considerate. I have to, you know, when you're thinking about being wife, you not. it's no more just you. And so I never really wanted to be wife. I was cool with the, with the I see you when I see you type of, type of infant situations because it was like, I don't want the responsibility of being the wife. That's why some girls are cool with being side chicks. And I think when you're doing all that overthinking, that's not you being you. Because when you're being you, you don't have to overthink no, everything. You, you just do. be you. And now I'm wife, and it's a lot of thinking going on. You I have don't to know. Like, that's what I'm saying. That gets too much. Let me say, okay, well, maybe you don't, because y'all are men. Right. But as a woman, you think about a lot. You think about, okay, before I even open my eyes, I'm thinking about what I'm going to make for dinner already. You understand what I'm saying? I'm thinking about, okay, let me do the laundry by eight or nine so that way I could be and do what I want to do for myself. It's a lot of thinking so I could be considerate of this Sounds person. like a job. It is. But see, it's but it's, but see, it's, it's is. not a job, Being though. Being a wifey is a job. If you it's think not that a job. It, stop. If they think that it comes easy and it just comes natural, it's just like being a mother. After carrying a child for nine months, you would hope that once that child comes out, you automatically have this connection and you automatically can be a mom and the best mom you could be. But I've met so many women that can relate that will say, yo, they went through postpartum. They didn't even know how to hold their child first. They didn't even know how to breastfeed. They didn't understand why the child wasn't latching on. They didn't know how to discipline correctly. They didn't know how to love correctly. It's the same thing as being wifey. Like, you could be taught. You could be taught. So, no, she may be coming in as being fuckable because she doesn't know, she doesn't even know an example of the traits of being wifey because she's never seen it. Just embark on what she's saying until that man does come along and nice. say, hey, yo, don't do that. Yeah, let me show that, you. Let me show you. If you want right to wanna, wanna be with me as that's my, true. As my yeah, woman, it's not that, that quick, Nisha. It's, it's, it's not that quick. But what I'm saying, if you, if you, going to say that's offensive. Yeah, exactly. Wanna, they're not receptive that quick. They're making it seem really easy. I might be saying what you said. They're making it seem very easy to be like, that's not how you do that, boo. No, I'm going to give you an example, right? If you are a woman that's been single for a long time, mm -hmm. right? And now here you are dating this man who's clearly pursuing you. You guys are spending a lot of time with each other. And you are a girl who's a social butterfly. 
Now you're in a room with multiple men who may know you. You may be used to hugging and kissing men, every single one. Mm -hmm. Now you're here holding your man's hand. The old Amanda would go hug everybody, go out of her way to say what up to everybody. But when you walk in that room with your man, you wouldn't dare let go of your man's hand to go hug another man and kiss him a certain way. You're just not going to move like that. What's a certain way? So now... What I just said, like letting go of your man's hand alone just to greet an- the opposite sex out of- to go out of your way is offensive. Like, if that person comes over and you like, hey, and it's mutual, but it's like you moving different. As a single woman, I'm walking in the spot trying to make sure I hug and kiss everybody. When I'm with my man, it's more so, hey, what's up? How you doing? How you guys? Are, and this is the part about you saying, like, is it a job? Yeah, because now you gotta you have to think because what we think is offensive as a woman. We, um, it's not offensive as a woman, it'd be offensive to men. See, but, yeah, see, for me as a man, if I was dating you, I want to know you want to hug and kiss these niggas. Go ahead and no, do it. No, but what Holiday is saying? Because, because, no, because, no, no, because, 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 wait, wait, let me finish what I'm saying from a man because that mirror is pretending in a man's mind. You're pretending. No. So you're not oh, doing... Go. You, you no, a man? You know, as a man's mind, this is what I'm trying to tell you. In a man's mind, that is pretending. If you're coming in here, you're stopping yourself from doing what you would normally and you want to do. No, boo. You go do that. No, and, and so I have done... Hold on. And I have done this. You know, like, let's say mm-hmm. you come in the room and you say hi. I might I might say something like, you, oh, you know him? Oh, yeah, I know him for 10 years. And then the second guy, she kids, oh, nah, you know, I know him for a little, you know, mm-hmm. six months. So why the fuck you saying hi to him? You don't know him for a long time. Like, what relationship you got with him mm-hmm. that he deserves a hive? And I understand, you know, Essa for 10 years, hung out with him throughout the years. And you see him, you're like, oh, shit, what's up? And you pay homage like the Italians do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have a problem with that. It's like, if you're going to say hi to everybody and, and three dudes you just met and you don't know, like, what the fuck you say hi to them for? I could see him and him. And you don't know those three. Like, what, what I, we think doing I, here? I think what is trying to say though is that a female can still be taught that she may not know how to be wifeable if she's only fuckable she's been fuckable all her life she don't know how to be wifeable until the right man comes along and shows her otherwise because he's that good of a man for example i'm gonna give you a perfect example there was somebody that i was dating years ago years ago when i was younger I was like, and i was <laughs> i was you know i people some people now i think being older i'm a little bit better but when i was younger i was very flirtatious because i was very just friendly being friendly and uh there was a guy that i was dating and we went to the studio and his friend was making music the music sounded so good to me. I was like, wow, this song is really good. I complimented <laughs> him, the artist. Like, yo, this song is good. Like, da 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 Like, just like, being friendly. <laughs> just being friendly. Later on that evening, the guy that I was dating showed me a text from that. Like, yo, that show, that girl's on, She's my, on my dick. She's too friendly. Fuck that. Like, don't talk to that bitch. That. And I was like, yeah, what? Yes. I was like, I was just trying to be nice and yeah, compliment his music. I didn't not, I swear I was not even looking at him like that. But that goes to show you that sometimes we don't realize how men do think. Mm-hmm, and right. we're thinking it's this way when really that it's happens. that way until we have a good man that's showing us otherwise. I'm sorry, but that's going to get you crossed off the hubby list. Because <laughs> if your ego can be attacked that, that easily, I can't be with you. Because I'm not stroking your ego about some compliment. Like... Yeah. That's, I can't, I can't do that. No, but if you walk into a party with your man, now let's just say he is a popular actor, a popular person or whatever. He does know a lot of people. He's going to hug. He's going to kiss everybody. But you as a woman, you just know how that feels when he's either just giving a greeting or it's like, it's a flirtatious of, you know, you shouldn't even hug Melissa like that because she feels this way about you. No, you can't control people's actions. But when you are single, I hug, when I, when I'm single, I hug men, I do, but I know they like me and I know they want me. You understand? So that hug is a little different when he hugs the small of my back. When I have a man, those same men, I don't hug the same way. Why? Because I know his intentions. No, you see, and and as a woman, sometimes I feel like we provoke things. And then wonder why men say the things they say or react the way, like, for example, in there, like, I'm, I'm just going to say, you shouldn't even be that friendly with a man in the studio because you already know you're attractive. You already know, no, I'm not saying tone down your sexiness, but you can monitor how you say things and what you do, especially a woman in a relationship, because you know a man's intention and where his mind is at. So yeah. approval from a family member, a friend, the squad, the boys, to co-workers. I'm not saying it's going to be the all-in, end-all deciding factor of what I'm going to continue to date this person, but it's definitely going to have an opinionated um, decision 
factor in my brain. Like, yeah. okay. And, and an influence over time. A I'm, super I'm influence. Shocked. I'm shocked So it's like, if I bring if I bring my man around, my homegirls, and they be like, oh, well, I wouldn't see you with him. I'm gonna use that for example, but that may not be the guy they see me with. Yes, I want my friends to like him. But at the end of the day, is okay. that gonna make me start deciding, questioning my relationship with this man because my friends don't approve of him? Absolutely not. I don't give a shit if, yeah, if, if a girl talking they, to a friend. They haters. If, okay. if it's family, friends, loved ones, whatever, people hate, especially it's it's more miserable people here than people that are really excited about living. So when you're happy, people, it's, it's a lot of people that's always gonna have shit to say about about things. With me, I never really cared about that. I, I couldn't care about that. You know what I'm saying? When you grow up in, in, in certain places and you gotta do certain things, you can't really worry about what people see or think or want to say about you. You always gotta keep it. And it moving. be your friend that be ready to fuck your and, man. And we from the same place. So I'm you be like, you. so it's 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 no factor. You don't like her, so what? She's not for you. You don't have to like her mom, dad, sister, friend, whatever. Why are you even so involved in who they are to determine if you like them or not? That's what I would personally say because they're not for you, they're for me. When I was my junior year, when I was 16, so the half of my junior year and my whole senior year in Queens, I lived by myself totally alone. You know what I'm saying? So from that point, I realized at a very young age that I had to do what I wanted to do because I always found myself trying to please people at all times and it didn't work. So after I found out that not pleasing people, um, trying to please people really, really didn't work because they just wanted more. They wanted you to do more or it's not good enough for them. I said, yo, I, I really just got to focus on myself and do what makes me excited about living life and, and giving me purpose. And it started when I was 16. My friends, my family, I mean, yeah, they can have an opinion, but my mother always been the person to go after whatever it is that you want and not allow anyone be a leader. So even when it comes to her and she used to tell me, even with me, if, if, if you are dating someone, I don't need to approve of them. As long as you're not being raped, killed, uh, threatened to, to do drugs or something that is detrimental to your life, I may not agree with who you choose to spend the rest of your life with. Just like you may not agree with who I chose to marry and make your father. You understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if this is what makes you happy, then at the end of the day, anybody in your circle, as long as it makes you happy, they, they should be fine and okay with it. And if it doesn't, then I think you question who this person is in your, in your space, in your life. I mean, I like a strong woman. So for me, you know, I like a woman that speaks up, you know, if we out and we in a party, we in a, in a, in a setting like we are now, you know, I, I need her to be her and share what she wants to share. I'm not looking at her like, you said that? You know, I'm like, all right, yeah, that's right, do your thing. I, I like that strong, confident woman. That's a woman that I need to continue being with. I don't like someone that's looking at me concerned about, is that okay? Like, I'm, I'm not your father. You know what I'm saying? I'm be you. And that's what I look forward to being somebody who's them. Nowadays, you meet a lot of characters, you know, people that are fake. And in time, all you're gonna do is have problems. And, and that's what a relationship is. And, you know, I, I, I'm at the age that I'm in, I like companionship. I, I, I need companionship. I don't need relationships. You know, relationship, that's the girl that's fuckable, you know? And that okay, I do when I'm dating. Fuckable. Fuckable, <laughs> fuckable, fuckable, whatever the fuck. Facts, and it's it's like we all said here today, clearly being yourself is the core root to it all, whether you want to be fuckable or wifeable. Right. <laughs> and obviously people around you, family, friends, coworkers, everybody can influence you to some shape or form, but you have to accept what you're in and if it's truly for you, you're there. Fuck what everybody says. Majority of us on this panel today, you know, discussed what we thought was wifeable, what we, thought was fuckable. We kind of had some of our differences of opinions, um, but in the end, we all know that it's your own preference to each its own. Uh, so thanks for watching this episode, season four, episode four. Continue to stream, subscribe to our YouTube, and we'll catch you on the next episode. And hit that notification. Let us know below, are you fuckable or wifeable, or both? That's right. Comment below. Love you guys, <laughs> eat at the table. Check us out, stay tuned. That's right.